In 1109, they had a visitor called Malakin, who was a changeling. I just noticed that the two bovine, as I mentioned, are not cows, but bulls. Morning, welcome to Walks and Wonders. Walking on. Just a quick update, if you're local you're going to follow this walk because some of you have told me you do. And in fact a couple of people have already said they're going to do this walk once they've seen the video. So if you're local you're going to do it. You now I've just come down by the recycling centre to the end of this little lane. Brings you into a field. As you come into the field there are two footpaths, they're not very clear but one bears right and goes to that gate over there. And I've done that on the Sturplin walk. I went that way but there is one i hadn't realized till last week there is one actually it just goes straight across the field so today we're going to go straight across on the left hand one not the right hand one and now here's voiceover man with today's route in today's video i'm walking from stowmarket to dagworth hall and encounter a spooky story then continuing across the fields around Old Newton and circling back and encountering a couple of bulls in a field. Join me on this glorious spring walk. So when you get to the other side of the field you will come to this little lane. This is Spikes Lane which goes up to near Nera's Garden Centre. And we just go straight across over that stile there and into the next field. When you come over that stile back there it's a little bit sketchy on this side and so the footprints are slightly spread out but basically you want to head for that big tree over there till you can more clearly see the footpath. Yeah, that bit back there as you saw is very boggy and actually we do need to head to that tree because the uh, entrance to the next field is right by the tree. Once you're over that style this sign is clearly saying keep to the public footpath. Where is it? Well there's a sign there saying no footpath, don't go that way. And over to your left, it's clear that that's, uh, that's a crop, so don't walk across there. But you'll see this uh, track here where things have driven down, and that looks like the footpath to me. Absolute glorious day today. It's hard to believe, and it? it's only like two and a bit weeks ago we were sort of battling through that blizzard over at one end. Just come off the road there, 
come to this junction with this lane here you turn right across this beautiful pretty little ford the spooky bit of this walk. It's a long time ago in 1109, that's how far back this story goes. That house behind me is Dagworth Hall, or what's left of it, I think it was bigger originally. In 1109 they had a visitor called Malakin, who was a changeling. So a changeling is a child that's been swapped with a fairy child. And so this childlike presence lived in the house causing trouble whispering to the people that were there seemed to be drawn to the children and Malikan revealed that he wore a hat that kept him invisible but did at one point take his hat off so they saw him and he just looked like a little child in an old gown and he told them that he'd been swapped with a fairy child seven years ago and he had to remain as a changeling for seven more years before he could be released and come back to this world normally. The story was known locally and it was uh, written down by, so I think it was a monk or someone who investigated all these types of stories. I believe this building behind me on the bend here was the old Oas house. I think they did a lot of uh, hop processing here. Oh, do you process hops? Ferment hops? I don't know what you do with hops, but anyway, you need an Oas house. And apparently this structure was the old Oas house of Dagworth Hall. It's now a residential property. So when you come down past that building, there is a little turn off to the right. Don't take that. Just stay on the tarmac road here we're going to go this way and you should come to an arch under the railway and we'll go underneath the arches
once you come through the archway you'll notice there is a little footpath sign here with a stile that goes over towards uh, Hawley, the Hawley level crossing near what was the railway inn. I don't think uh, the pub's open anymore. But we're going to go towards Old Newton, back round into town eventually. Just carry on up the road. news on the virus front. Called in for my jab the other day and they're very efficient or fairly straightforward. One little niggle though. I know tempers are a bit frayed in the NHS. They've all gone above and beyond. I get that. I totally support them. But I really don't think there was any need for the nurse to call me a little prick just before she gave me the jab. We come to the end of Dagworth Lane and what we're going to do is always a keep the job best. So you come to the end of uh, Dagworth Lane there, come to the old Newton Road. Now last weekend, days and I just walked down the old Newton Road back into Stone Market, but you're taking your life in your hands. Some of these drivers just don't slow down. I thought we were going to die at one point. So I'm not recommending that on this video. We're going to go straight across down this little lane here, which I think heads towards the old Newton village. Try and get across here without getting run over. Yeah, it's signposted Gipping, Mendelsham and Debenham. We're not going that far at all. What we're going to do white all road this is. What I'm going to do is follow this down I'm fairly sure it picks up a footpath which goes across to the uh, Gipping Lane further up. More sort of traffic free really so we don't take our lives in our hands. We'll just consult the map here. Yeah you can see we've just come past where it says the chase and um, we didn't get down Stone Market Road. We crossed straight over and uh, if you see where that blue blob is, you can see we are coming up. There's a little green dotted line that crosses this road. And that's a footpath that will take us over a bit more towards Stowe Upland. I think I spy a green footpath sign here, which gives me hope it matches up with the map. Oh, two green footpath signs. Apparently we can go either left or right. We're going to go right. This must be the footpath between Stowe Upland and Old Newton in that case. I haven't explored the one to the left, but I'm going to go this one to the right. According to my calculations, which obviously aren't worth diddly squats, I always get lost. But according to my calculations, for what they're worth, we just walk to the left of this ditch down here and just follow this footpath. And it brings on the little lane that goes out to the village of Gipping. And then I know where I'm going from there. So, all the route to the main road we just crossed back there, I did with Hazel last weekend. So. I was confident not getting lost there, but we're now in uncharted territory where I've glanced at a map and think, oh, I could go that way. And so we shall see. Although it's not really that far, so I don't think I don't think you can go far wrong down here. It's a footpath heading in the generally the right direction. And here you can see you get the big 
Suffolk skies. I do miss the hills of Manchester and Lancashire and Yorkshire and all that. The hills near Manchester where I grew up living down here but I've got to say a Suffolk, a big Suffolk sky is quite an impressive thing. No dark satanic mills in this area. We were young and we were free and running Never bothered about what could be coming Every day we danced and life was smiling We were young and drunk in love Nice little chat with a couple of women back there, one of whom's seen a couple of videos. This is the other thing about getting out for a walk, because we're all uh, like a house arrest with these lockdowns. Just getting out and meeting a couple of strangers on a walk and having a socially distant chat. That lifts the spirits. Right, well we come to a style here. Here on this bridge we're crossing the upper reaches of the River Gipping, quietly flowing through the field. Yep, so we just came out of that field there onto this little lane. Um, there's two walks up to Stow Upland here if you wanted to go a bit further. If you turn left you should find a footpath. I haven't um, traced it myself yet. Car coming. If you turn left you should find a footpath on your right which takes you up past Columbine Hall. I've not done that one yet but that will be a future video. Um, other than that you just wanted a little bit more of a walk you turn right like I have heading back towards Stow Market almost immediately here you have a footpath a bit muddy today that footpath there will take you up to Green Farm and bring you out on Thorny Green up in Stow Upland and then you can wander back into Stow Market if that's where you're going if you want to see the route through the Green Farm there um, just have a look at my Stow Upland video about halfway through and uh, that's the way I go when I've been coming this way. But we're going to stay on this little lane. I assume it's Gipping Lane because it goes to Gipping until we come to the main road. A special shout out today for David and Fiona Hyams and also Helen Barnett. A couple of people have asked me could they support the channel with a little donation and it's not something I've pursued before but a few people have asked and it certainly is an expensive <laughs> hobby. So obviously all these videos will be free on YouTube and on my website absolutely no problem with that but for those who wanted to make a little donation with some of the costs of the producing the videos I've now got a PayPal link in the description of each new each future video if you click on that you can make a donation and I'll get notified I've said the videos will always be free on YouTube and on the website this is just because a few people have asked could they help support the channel so you come to this little junction with Stowe Market Road I'm going to turn right down across the river and across the railway and back to Spikes Lane. Mm -hmm. 
and bottom of this slope you will come to the River Gippen again so we cross it in the field a little while back. I do find this spot just over the river very peaceful. And we just carry on down here to the railway. And what you want to do here, unless you like flinging your leg over barriers, is to catch this path just before the crash barrier kicks in. Yes, more athletic people may be able to swing the leg over the barrier, but you're a bit safer behind the barrier anyway. And then we cross the railway. Yeah, this is the main Norwich to London line. So it's worth being careful, checking and getting across without messing about because uh, the trains do come past here pretty damn fast. So slightly left out the railway crossing gates and straight down Spikes Lane for a little bit. Then we'll find a footpath that takes us back to the starting point. As you saw, we just turn into this field, this footpath. There's a couple of bovines over in the distance. Try not to attract their attention. I'm sure they're not interested in me in the slightest. Yeah, you can of course just walk straight up Spikes Lane to the garden centre and walk back into town that way. But this is a footpath across this field. I've just noticed that the two bovine, as I mentioned, are not cows, but bulls. Uh, I think they're all right. So we'll get over this side of the field, make a quick exit if anything towards happens there. I think they're just happy eating grass, not bothered about me. It's just that they are such big animals that if you had a collision with one, I'm fairly sure it would be the human that came off worst. This field too is extremely boggy. Yeah, and just keep the hedge on your right here. You'll come to the little um, gate. Yeah, so come back to pretty much near where we started. Remember at the beginning, it's these two footpaths we took the left one across the field. And we'll just now come back through this one and just go down this little footpath here to get back to the road. So how long was that? Let's have a look on the map. That's three and three quarter miles from this starting point here around the route. If you walk in from the centre of town, probably about four and a bit miles. Not too far. So if you enjoyed the video, can you show it by clicking the thumbs up button on YouTube? And then if you want to help me, click that red subscribe button and hit the little bell icon. Then you'll get notifications of new videos and it helps me and helps the channel and it's free. So thanks for watching today and let's walk together soon. <laughs>